I have felt like a pull to free ride and ski mountain lines for a long time. Standing on top of all of this would be one of the biggest faces I've ever skied. In this series, we learn from experts as they pick their brains, train the skills learned, and ski some nice mountain objectives. And once in a full moon, self impose a good challenge. And all of this so I can learn to go and ski my first 6,000 meter mountain. Hello, my name is Jens, and I'm gonna make this series called Into the Mountains. Like it sounds, going into the mountains, exploring, learning. Make sure it's nice and neat. Practicing. Skiing some beautiful lines, hopefully. And uh, I want to take as many viewers as possible along on this ride. My first memory of skiing was probably outside my house in northern Sweden on like this long plastic skis where you have a strap over the toes and one that goes in across around your ankle to hold them in. It's probably what I learned my first tricks on too. I remember the first time I put on a pair of skins. 2007 or something in Sweden, Hemavan. I thought it was such a faff. It was just glue everywhere. Into the Mountains project is basically me combining my work with my dream to go and ski some much bigger mountains, like some more 4,000, maybe 5,000. And in a few years, the big goal of skiing a nice 6,000 meter mountain. I'm gonna go and ski with mountain guides and other experts and mentors and uh, document the things I'm learning from them. A bit uh, of a tutorial story style. And then we are going to show, and hopefully that will inspire the viewers, how we train these skills. It can be how we train search and rescue, first aid scenarios, access and ropes and that sort of things in safe settings and then occasionally we'll go and also practice these skills by skiing some uh, mountain objectives that i think look appealing it is so hot and i've been walking for two minutes and it's middle of february I think it's going to be like 10 degrees in the valley today. Not that great. So you'll see a bunch of different challenges. Could be doing a lot of vertical meters in a day or long distance over a few days. Anything that's perhaps physically demanding or technically challenging too. Could also be a, a ski, a line of a certain difficulty. Let's see if Carlos is going to slide off here. It's a little... Uh, Tricky, slidey snow here. It's a tiny slope, but I'm gonna let him walk past it first anyway. My free ride experience started kind of reckless. Me and some mates uh, that I was skiing with a lot back in Sweden 
if we had powder, we would go to ski the powder. We had transceiver shovels and probes. We had tried together, practice using them, but uh, we were pretty slow probably and pretty bad at it. And we probably hardly knew how to read a uh, avalanche bulletin. Here's a little tip for you. When it's like your skis are sliding away, really, as you always should, drag the ski in the ground, but really try to follow the track before you or the track you are making if you're first. And it like digs in a little bit deeper than if you would just like even lift it a little bit, like hover it. Like keep a little bit of pressure on it while sliding forward. You get a like nice ish edge to stand on. It's a little, it's not that tricky here anymore. Oh, well it is here. You can see this person here slipped off. So we're gonna see if we can actually, oh, we couldn't. I got caught to my first avalanche like two weeks in, a point release powder avalanche that tried to drag me into a color full of rocks and hurt me. We knew very little, but felt like we knew something. And that's kind of stupid. If you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect, we were definitely on what is considered a mount stupid. The Dunning-Kruger effect. This is when a person gains some amount of competence in a given field and their confidence gets way too high. This used to be me a little over a decade ago. Now when I've learned more, I've been a little bit in trouble, that confidence has been depleted and I've fallen to the valley of despair and today I hope I'm climbing the slope of enlightenment. With this series I want to inspire like a young me, like a young Scandinavian ski bum myself, 19 years old coming to the Alps and say hey, really do some avalanche courses, do trainings, do practice with your friends, uh, take it serious, learn from mentors and experts and keep a really open mind and, uh, and perhaps you will stay a bit more safe. My reckless experience has then triggered uh, me to learn more over the years and now I really don't consider myself particularly experienced in the mountains. Like, I've done now maybe 18, 19 days of avalanche workshops and trainings. Soon I got the whole level four ski instructor license and then I can take people off piece skiing and guide them on easy ski tours. So I definitely know a few things, but it's so much to learn. And I really do feel like I'm down here and there is so much more to learn and experience too. Because you can know things in te theory, have practiced it, but you still don't have experience that takes a lot of time skiing nice objectives and hopefully I can document all of that. I can choose to stay completely safe if I want to, but to do the kind of skiing I want to do, we ski sometimes such terrain that it's just never going to be perfectly safe. For the first episode of Into the Mountains, we're just gonna climb up and ski down this cute little couloir. It'd be nice, except the snow. That's our cardboard crap snow. Yeah, that'll do. Today it's more about riding this little couloir than it is to enjoy the perfect snow. What's your biggest fear? Dying. I'm a dad since a month. Hello. How are you? I want to have more margin for error because yeah, dying is not an option. And here's a little loose, wet avalanche from yesterday. Where some snow fell down from the rocks. Making it start sliding. It's 
time to change to crampons and cramplifiers when it gets too steep and narrow to do this I haven't really used this before but uh, let's let's try it let's see how it goes almost uh, slipped back down to where I started due to I tried to walk sideways like such and uh, cramplifiers don't work good that way you have to always get your toes into the mountain something these cool mountaineering people on YouTube isn't telling you it's how freaking hard it is you have like 185 impulse walking up this thing it may be that I'm not as fit as I would like to that is true I feel like I've never known less. And this experience is so humbling and wonderful. And it's so special about free ride skiing because the dangers are kind of hiding in the snow and that creates a false sense of confidence. We are up. Hey, Carlos, how's it going? I think I ski pretty slowly. It's, uh, yeah, not, it's pretty challenging snow. Drop it in, 10. Okay, let's drop in. I never actually count to 10 when we say this sort of thing. Three, two, one. I just want to document my journey, what I learned, reflect on the decisions we made that were wrong and right. Oh, very hard. Kind of good here. Yeah, show what it takes to learn how to ski some bigger mountains. It's a long journey and I expect it will take a few years. <laughs> 